By using the event-based hierarchy mode of RadGrid View for WinForms, you can load data on demand rather than all up front. Doing so reduces the overall memory footprint of your application and results in faster initial load times of forms containing RadGrid views. In this video, we'll take a look at setting up an event-based hierarchy in RadGrid View. Let's get started. So as you can see, I've already created an initial project that contains a form, and as you can see, this form contains a RadGrid view and a single button. And this project also contains an AdventureWorks model, which is basically an entity diagram created using Entity Framework. If we look at the code behind for this button, as you can see, I create an instance of the AdventureWorks entities, and then I set the data source of the RadGrid view to the product subcategories collection on my entity diagram. So if we take a look at this application in action, as you can see, when I click the populate button, it's going to populate the form, and here I have a listing of subcategories uh, based on products from the AdventureWorks database. Let's say I wanted the users to be able to expand into these product subcategories and see the products that actually exist beneath them in the hierarchy. Well, let's go ahead and set that up using an event-based hierarchy so we can load the products in as the user wants to see them rather than loading them all up front. So I'm going to close out of the application. And the first thing I'm going to need to do is jump back over to our form and I'm going to set up a child template in the RadGrid view that will display our products information. So I'm going to click on the RadGrid view and we'll use its smart tag to open the property builder. And once the property builder has been opened, I'm going to select the top level master grid view template and I'm going to add a child template to its templates collection and I'll click OK. And then for this child template, let's go ahead and add four columns. So I'm going to add four text box columns. And the first column will be what displays the name of a product. So the name of this column, we'll just call it name. Its field name will be name. And then finally, its header text will be name. And then for the second column, this column is going to display product number. So we'll just call this column product number. The field name will be product number. And then finally, its header text will be product number as well. And then for column number three, this is where we'll display the color of a product. So the name will be color, the field name will be color, and the header text will also be color. And then finally, for column number four, this will be the column that displays the list price of a product. So we'll call it list price. The field name will be list price. And then finally, the header text will be list price as well. And now that I've set that up, I'm going to switch back over to the grid view template. And let's jump over to the advanced tab. And I'm going to scroll down to the auto size columns mode property. And let's set this to fill so it makes the uh, child template look a little bit nicer. So I'm going to click OK, and now that we've set that up, I'm going to double click the form to jump here into the code behind and implement the form load event. And this is where I'm going to specify that I want the child template that we just created to use the event based hierarchy mode. So I'm going to say grid view template 2, which is the template we created, and then we'll say dot hierarchy data provider. And we're going to set this equal to a new grid view event data provider and then we'll just pass in the grid view template to its constructor and now that we've done that I'm going to jump back into the designer and I'll select the rad grid view and let's switch over to the events for the rad grid view and let's resize this a little bit and I'm going to scroll down to the row source needed event so let's scroll down to that and the row source needed event is the event that's actually going to get called when a user tries to expand a row. So using this event, we're going to dynamically populate the child grid view that gets displayed to the user. So I'm going to double click this. And then inside of this, I'm going to first need to cast the data bound item on our parent row to a product subcategory, which is the object type uh, being pulled back from the AdventureWorks model. So I'm going to say var product subcategory set this equal to e dot parent row dot data bound item as product subcategory and now that I have that I can simply loop through each of the products that that subcategory has and add them manually to the rows collection 
So I'm going to say for each var product and product subcategory dot products. And then I'm going to, inside of this loop, I'm going to create a grid view row info. So grid view row info. We'll just call this row and we'll set it equal to e dot template dot rows dot new row. That's going to create our new row for us. And then I'm going to say row dot cells. And this is where I'm going to access those columns that we created in the designer. So the first one I'm going to access is name. And we'll set this equal to product dot name. And then we'll access the product number cells. So we'll say row dot cells. And then we'll say product number. And then I actually forgot to add value up here. So I'm going to say row dot cells name and then we'll access the value property. So again for product number we'll say value as well. And we'll set it equal to product dot product number. Then we'll do the third row. So we'll say row dot cells and this is going to be the color cell. We'll access its value property and set it equal to product dot color. And then finally we'll access the list price cell. So we'll say cells list price dot value equals product dot list price. And then finally I need to say e dot source collection dot add row. And that's going to add our new row to the child grid view being displayed to the user. So now that we've set all of this code up, let's take a look at the application once more. So I'll click the run button and I'll click populate. And as you can see, uh, now pluses are displayed to the user and this says that I can expand into these particular rows. So I'm going to expand into road bikes, so I'll click that. And as you can see, it's used the event-based hierarchy event handler to populate these rows. So here are all of the available road bikes in the AdventureWorks database. So I can unexpand out of that. And just to show you that this is actually calling my row source needed event, I'm just going to place a breakpoint here, jump back over to the application, and let's expand into headset. So I'll click that. As you can see, it's hit my breakpoint. It's going to retrieve the product subcategory, and then it's going to loop through all of the products and create rows for those products. So if I hit F5, we can take a look at the available headsets in the AdventureWorks database. So that's basically all it takes to set up an event-based hierarchy using RadGridView for WinForms. Thanks for watching.